our guest speaker today. Her name is Maria Quattrone, and she is an entrepreneur, a real estate expert, an investor, a speaker. She is a Philadelphia native, and she has grown into a very uh, successful agent in Philadelphia, and she also covers a little bit of New Jersey, I believe, so she'll tell you about that, and she has done over $500 million worth of sales, so Maria. Maria, welcome. Hi, Chantel. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. Great to see everybody today. You too. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're doing for lead generation right now. So kind of talk to us a little bit about your best techniques for lead gen. So here's the deal. We have about 20,000 people um, in our database, which only from three years ago. So don't ask what happened before that. (laughs) But one of the best ways to build your business is really through your database, through people that have already raised their hand and that are already in the funnel. So you can bring all new leads in that you want. And there's a lot of ways that we do that. One One of the biggest ways, though, organically, is through having a lot of listings, having a lot of signs on the street. So the more lead, the more the more signs that you have, the more leads that you're going to organically, um, you're going to organically get just because of the listing. So all of the marketing that we do at our firm is geared towards listing property. So we don't buy buyer leads or anything like that. It all comes from generating listings, and we generate listings through our database, through our network through working with investors. We sell a lot of investment real estate, whether that is multifamily, commercial, vacant land. Right now um, in our company, we have 151 listings that are one of those three things, plus the regular residential stuff. So we always have a lot of signs on the street, which generate calls every day. We also have uh, a pretty good presence on Google. We have our 500 reviews. So people see us on Google, uh, they read our reviews, they see that we're knowledgeable. It really helps um, tremendously when people are searching for a realtor in Philadelphia marketplace. And when they do search that, we do come up, whether it's that or through um, Remax, which is our, which is the franchise that I own. So let's talk about the Google reviews. What are you doing to get people to put their Google reviews on on your site? You have to ask them. And you have to do a great job. Asking and having a process for asking, you know, this Google review thing, honestly, has been a thorn in my side (laughs) because it's something that you never can stop doing. You have to do it all the time. You have to ask people for the Google review after every transaction. We like to get asked for it during the transaction, but most people won't leave it until after the transaction. Um, That's key in getting that review. And in order to do that, you have to do a great job. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be responsive. You got to be communicative. You know, you really need to put your put yourself out there with the client and be transparent and honest with them. And also future pace them that at the end of this transaction, I'm going to ask you to do a Google review for me. So please let me know along the line if there's something that we can improve in our process and our in what we're doing. Um, the Google review is critical, um, critical to growth. I love that. And one of the things that I am going to go over just in a little bit is something called Linktree. Do you have a Linktree? Do you know what that is? Yes, I do have a Linktree. We just made it recently. Um, I'd love for you to put that uh, in in just a little bit. You can find that and add that into... um, the comments so people can do that. And I'll, I'll share that with you if in just a few minutes, but let's talk about kind of the th- processes that you do for time management. One of the things I'm hearing people say right now is that they're just so overwhelmed doing so many things. What's kind of your best tips for time management? 
I really, well, one, I think you need, first and foremost, you need to have a daily schedule. You need to have a daily schedule and you need to have a time block schedule. And everything that you need to do in a given day needs to get into that schedule. And the first thing that should be done from everybody is personal development. Some sort of personal development in the morning before you start your day. Whether that's working out, reading a book for a half hour, meditating, writing, um, prayers, whatever that means for you. Just to clear your head, get your head, your day started off right. Now, I try to do that. Every, I attempt to do that every day. Some days, I'd say from Monday to Friday, four out of five, it happens. You know, we're human. So maybe I didn't sleep well last night. Maybe this happened. Maybe that happened. It's not, it's not an excuse. It just is what it is. So if it doesn't happen, it's because it's not in the schedule. So making sure first that it's actually in the schedule that says I'm going to work out from 7 to 7.30, that it's in the schedule. Um, I like to plan the day the night before. So looking at my schedule, you know, I look at my schedule from a lot of different perspectives. I look at the week. I look at the month. And then I look at the day. And then I look at the day before. So I want to know, like on Sunday, I was reviewing what, I was doing this week. And then I looked on my list of things that I have to get done. And I said, okay, I need to place these actually in the schedule. They have to be in the schedule because if they're not in the schedule, chances of them happening are slim to none. So what else does that mean? Like the night before, what time you go to bed, right? What time you go to bed is key and what time you wake up in the morning. You know, what you do the night before, are we out? you know, partying or we home, get a good night's sleep. You know, do we watch TV till midnight or did we shut this TV off at, you know, 10 and go right to sleep? So we're not having, you know, negative energy from the TV or the news. Don't watch the news, everybody. If you watch the news, shut the news off. There's nothing in the news that you need to hear. I hear people, they tell me, oh, I watch the news at 11 or I watch it at 5.30 a.m. I'm like, who wants to start their day? Listen, there's no good news on there. Nothing's good. And if there's anything, if there's anything that you need to know, somebody else will tell you, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll, you'll know about it. You're not going to miss anything. People have FOMO. You're missing out on bad news. So no news. Start the day the night before. Figure out what you're going to wear the night before. Have a plan. Why do I say that? We, okay, especially for ladies. Because men kind of wear the same stuff. But, you know, I don't know if you wear suits. Some, I, don't see any, I see one guy, has. he looks like he might have a suit jacket on. I know it's hot. I don't know where everybody is, but it's 97 here in Philly. And the air conditioning in our office broke yesterday. So I'm sitting in the kitchen. I got a fan here. I wasn't going to miss this. I'm sweating my ass, excuse me, off. <laughs> And I'm here. But anyway, planning the night before your clothes. What's happening for lunch and breakfast? Are you going to lunch? Are you bringing the lunch? Don't be wasting time going down to the store to go get the lunch. Already have it prepared. Why do I say all these things? Because we don't need to make any more decisions than we already have to make. And you only have a limited amount of time, a limited decision-making skill a day. So do not waste it on what am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to get for breakfast? What am I going to wear in the morning? You know, so have your schedule, do some type of personal development first thing. Oh, the next thing after that, make your bed. Everybody make your bed. Why? It's a win. You, you won because you made your bed. I could tell you about 50% of people do not make their bed first thing in the morning. They do not make the bed. I wouldn't, I don't care if I'm late, which I'm usually not, but I don't care if I am late, I'm making that bed because that is the first win of the day for me. Got first it. win of the day. If my husband's out of the bed, the bed will be me before I go to the gym. If he's not, it's got to be me when I come back. So it's either happening before the gym or when I get back from the gym and he's out of the bed. It all depends on the day, what's happening. But the bed needs to be made. Your clothes need to be decided. Your lunch and your breakfast should already be decided. You need to be organized. You want to make money like a professional athlete. You need to get your shit together. 
There's so much money and opportunity in real estate. If you wanted to, you know, make seven figures, a million dollars a year, completely possible. If you're organized, if your schedule is intact and you don't do things outside the schedule. So if you're like, hey, you know, you're looking at prospecting, lead follow up, we call it from 830, depending 830 to nine or 830 to nine, you're role playing nine to 12. You're following up on making calls, making dollars, hundred dollars a day. You want to talk to at least 21 people a day. Then after that, if you have appointments, hopefully you do, you go on appointments. If you don't, you make more calls. There's not really any other things to do. Like a lot of the stuff that we do is is a waste of time. Focusing on the income generating activities first and foremost is what's going to move your business forward especially in today's environment where we're in a shifting marketplace. That's so good. I think, I think people also forget about, uh, they talk about time management, but there's, there's energy management as well. And there's things that you just don't, that really drain your energy. And one of the podcasts I listened to this week, they were talking about how it's so important that the very beginning, you find out where you are, it's kind of red, yellow, green. And so green means this is the time that you are so, you have the most energy. So for me, from 8 a.m., really from 6 a.m., but but 8 a.m. to 12 noon, I am that's when my energy is the highest. My focus is the best. Everything is the best for me. Some people it's in the afternoon, some people. So kind of finding that time that's your highlight that you can do your prospecting. So talk about that. Like what what are your best times for you personally to do your prospecting and how consistent do you have to be to get that done and anything to kind of motivate you to make sure you're doing that piece every single day? Here's the thing. The motivation needs to come from why are you doing this? Not the why of like, oh, I want to do... um all this crazy stuff. People make these whys so big. But what is why is real estate the vehicle you choose? Okay. And if it is because I want to get out of debt or I want to take my kids to Disney or I'm going to Europe, this, that, or whatever it is, you need to focus on being able to deliver that to your family or to yourself if you're single and you don't have a family. Maybe it's just you. You still need to be accountable to yourself. And hold, your, and hold yourself to accountable. So the only thing we can control is ourselves. We can't control anybody else. And we have 100% control of our activity. And so I don't, it's a hard question to answer because I don't need motivation to do anything. Like I'm already motivated. I'm, I'm, uh, how do you get up to other people to be motivated? Some people will never be motivated. They never will be. Right? We can't make a human do anything. We can just provide an environment of encouragement and building confidence. And how you build confidence is keeping your commitments to yourself. So if you said, you know, I'm going to make my 21 contacts a day, conversations a day, and you do it, oh, that feels good. And then you do it again the next day, oh, that feels good. So now we want to do more of it. I'll use myself as an example. I quit sugar on February 28, 2000. And and 22. I was doing it for one month for 31 day challenge. 31 days. I did it. And then I was like, oh, this is good. Okay. Let me continue that. So then I said, I'm going to do till Easter. And then I did that. And then I said, I'll do to the end of the month. And then it was till Memorial Day. And as this is going on, I'm feeling better. Then I said, okay, I'm going to start getting some good walks in. I'm going to start riding my bike. And then I added in weightlifting a couple days a week. And then also reducing any complex carbohydrates. I already don't eat gluten. So like reducing any, like eating potatoes, corn, rice, things like that. 
um, only like once or twice a week as opposed to daily. So why did all that happen? Because I had confidence, built more confidence, built more confidence as I start to feel better. It's the same thing in selling, same thing in making, here's in making your calls. Here's the thing. You're going to be in pain either way. I was going to be in pain stopping the sugar, stopping the carbohydrates, stop adding the walks, all this. Or I was going to be in pain because if I didn't do it, because I felt like crap. So with your calls, it's the same thing. The time's going to go by anyway. If you don't do it, you will be in pain. If you do do it, it will be pain too, temporarily, because you'll start to see results. You start to see results, you get more confidence, and then you start to, you get better in what you're doing. But if you don't do it, the pain will be more permanent. I love that. And I think that one of the things that people need to do is have kind of a text message that works for them for the day. So let me give you an example, because I, I feel like people now want to do text messaging more than anything. And hopefully, you know, that text message leads to a phone call. Um and I, I know you had talked about sellers and I totally agree with you that sellers is the way that we need to go. But I'm gonna put a couple of texts in the chat message right now. So I'd like for you to give an example text or an example call that could be used to, to procure sellers. So I'll do one for a buyer. So if I said like, you know, I had an extra cup of coffee today. I'm super energized. I really want to help you. I had a couple new properties that came on the market today. Can I go over them with you? It might be the perfect match. Can we do a quick five minute call? Something like that. And then that's the text message that I use for the day. And I send that, I make a commitment to send that to 21 people for the day. And well, maybe more because I need to have 21 conversations. What, what would be a good sample text message or call that you would do to get someone to get a seller? Hey, Chantel, I, I have some buyers that are looking around uh, your property at 123 Main Street. Could you give me a call back today? I discussed with you. Uh, if, the proper, if you're still looking to sell a property. Okay, good. Give us another one. Uh, so for a seller, I uh, saw that your property was on the market. Um, let us, I, I would say- Is this that for a for sale by owner that you're doing right now? Or give it, give me some context. They're in the database. They reached okay, out before the they wanted to sell their property. They okay. wanted to sell their property and they didn't at the time, they weren't ready. So I'm working with buyers in- your neighborhood of 123 Main Street, give me a call back. I'd like to discuss it with you. It's very simple. Mm. They don't know what, what do we want to discuss? They're going to be like, what does she want to discuss? Good, good. Give me one more. Um, so for a seller, um, hey, I saw that, you know, you, you were on the market last year. Uh, I have a buyer that I just sold a house to right across the street from yours at one, two, three Main Street, G give me a call back. Like I would always reference it to some, we have a buyer looking for X, Y, Z. Perfect. And what else are you doing to procure those seller leads? Let's say somebody doesn't just has, doesn't have a lot of leads. Maybe they're newer in the business and they are, they have their sphere. Um, but what would you do to kind of get their sphere looking to get seller leads? Well, I don't think you can make anybody sell anything, Chantel. I think that you need to go after people that are looking to sell for sale by owners, expired listings, uh, circle prospecting about listings that just came to the market, door knocking. Expired listings is how I grew my whole entire business back in 2000. I started working with sellers, I guess, 2006. And calling the expired listings, mailing them, handwriting notes to them. Uh, I guess it's, you know, I know you're in a lot of different markets here, so I don't know each individual market, but, you know, it's definitely more expired listings here than there has been in a long time. But I would focus on expired listings. I'd 
I would focus on calling those people, buying a subscription to Red X or uh, Espresso Agent or one of these other services that provide you, or you can use like um, Property Stream or uh, there's also um, Spokio where you can plug people's numbers in. We used to use Vulcan 7, but we haven't really found them to be good right now. Um, the information is kind of crap, and I've been with them since, gosh, probably 2010. So a long time, a long time I've had the description, and it's something actually I don't know if we're going to keep because we haven't been able to pull the right information. But so I would use one of their services, invest invest in that. You know, Vulcan 7 was cost us about $270 a month. Um, the other ones are similar in pricing. I think they're around the same amount. But deciding, you know, if you get the service, it's a little bit easier because they're going to give you the information versus having to look them up one by one in Spokio or or one of those other systems. And those you just pay for per each one, but it's more time consuming. And now a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Kanzel Realty. One of the other things we give you is revenue share, where you get five levels of money in your downline every time you attract an agent to the company. And guess what? The first three levels open up right away. So let's pretend like you're not a great recruiter, but you bring on a couple people who are heavy hitters. Guess what? You don't have to hire five or 10 agents to open up those tiers. You automatically get those. So that's what makes us very different. This is Kanzel. So what would the message be? So let's talk about an expired listing. And obviously there hasn't been as many expired listings with our market the way that it is, but I think we're going to start getting some more coming on the market. So what would be a good script for you once you saw that on there? What would your script be for an expired? Like if I'm talking to them on the phone? Either that or a text. If you could do both, that'd be great. So if I'm call I'm calling them on the phone and so hey Chantel Maria Quattrone with Three Max at home how are you? Great, how are you? I'm awesome, thanks. I'm calling about the prop your property at one two three Main Street. I saw it recently came off the market. Oh my god, I'm getting so many calls from agents. I'm just about over it. All you guys do, it's like, how did you even get my number? Because I'm so over it right now. I've gotten so many calls and I'm done. Ah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Chantel. But when you sold this home, where were you going to go next? Um, down to Florida to to be with uh, some really good friends of mine. So you're going to go down to Florida? What area? I really love the Tampa area. I have a friend of mine, Deborah, that's such a little doll baby, and I just love her so much. I want to kind of be near her. Awesome. And how soon did you want to be in the Tampa area, Chantal? Well, I mean, if the house would have sold, I would have been there by now, but I just, I can't seem to get it sold right now. No, I understand. I understand. And what do you think stopped the home from selling? I mean, the agent just didn't do a darn thing and wasn't available. And I, I think it's probably the agent's fault. And maybe it might be a little bit overpriced, maybe a little bit, but not by much. Okay. I understand what you're saying. So you have it listed here for 400000 Did you have any offers while you were on the market? No, we didn't. We had showings. We had a lot of showings, but no offers. So I see that you were in the market for 180 days. How many showings do you think maybe you had? Maybe five. We, maybe five. Five in the last 180 days? Yes. Okay. I understand. And... Are you willing to adjust your price downward when working with a motivated buyer in today's market? Maybe a little bit, but not by much. Not by much. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Understood. And what do you expect from the next agent that you choose? I want them to be really responsive. Johnny on the spot. I want them to just be in more communication with me. Okay. So you're looking for a weekly communication check-in? Yes. Great. Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic, Chantal. Well, not sure if you know, but we've worked with a lot of folks like you that have been on the market for a while. We actually specialize in selling homes that other real estate agents have been unable to sell. 
Um, so I'd love to schedule a time. We could do it on Zoom or in person. Which do you prefer? Probably on Zoom just to start to see if I like you or not. How is either today, this, this afternoon between uh, four to five or would tomorrow morning be better for you? Today's fine. Awesome. So Chantal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a Zoom link shortly with a calendar request as well. And in there, I will have all the information about what we do to get properties like yours sold um, in today's marketplace. I can promise you this, Chantal, we will get you the highest value that the market will bear. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds real good. Awesome. Well, I look forward <laughs> to seeing you. I'll be, I'll be on Zoom at four o'clock. I'm committed to seeing you then. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Well, one of the things that I noticed that was fantastic is that when I got really riled up, you just stayed so calm. And then just moved right on to the next question. And the, the best next question that you asked, in my opinion, is, well, let me just ask you, if you were to sell the home, where, where were you looking to move to? Because then it just, it just took me completely off that mad trail. And then I focused on answering that question. And I think that was really genius. I love that so much. That was yeah, really uh, great. Thanks. Absolutely. So, you know, we only can control our response and how we react. So keeping calm at all times, showing them that you're the expert in the marketplace and having that confidence. And I don't care that a hundred other people have called her because not that I don't care. I feel, you know, that's a pain in the ass, but mm. I know that if I don't help you, Chantal, I believe in my heart of hearts, you may get the wrong agent again. Mm, I like that. I like and that's that. how I approach it that you may actually get the wrong agent to work with again. Mm, that's really good. I want to talk to you a little bit about reaching out to your database. So like, let, let's say that you did some kind of text like this, like a text where you're like, I'm hoping you're trying to stay cool. The weather is so hot. Like first, the, one of the things we say is like the first sentence is just something about something generic, right? And then going into like, you know, I didn't know if you had any friends looking to sell. I have a couple buyers looking around in your zip code and I'm having them, I'm having trouble helping them find something. Do you know any of your friends that possibly would be willing to sell? Have you tried something like that or along those lines to work your database of people who, you know, are try you're trying to get seller leads that way? Um, we do a lot of calling more so than texting, but we'll call text and email, but something that is really, I think works really well today is doing a video. Instead of sending a text, doing a video text, your conversion rates are going to go up dramatically. And just being like, Hey, Chantal, checking in with you. Um, it's hot as heck here in Philly. Just want to check on that investment property. I know last year you were thinking of selling it. Uh, it's still a pretty good time. We have some buyers looking in that area. Give me a call um, as soon as you have a moment. Something like that. Just short and sweet. I think 20 seconds or less. And setting out video text. Because what happens with video is that when people see video, they think you're on TV. And the brain actually thinks that you're famous because you're on TV, even though it's just a one-way video. And because of law of reciprocity, humans, not it doesn't matter what human, and most all humans will respond to a video text. And though even if they tell you no or whatever, because they feel an obligation because there's a talking head in front of them. I love that. I love that. And I would say, so for me, just because I'm really big on time management, what I would do is come up with a video text when, you know, I, my makeup was done and my hair was done and I kind of looked halfway okay. And then I would put that video text and make one for a seller and one for a buyer. And I wouldn't make it super personal because then I have to keep do it for each one, but I'd make it sound like, I was sending it 
you know, to just them because that way I would be able to, you know, send a bunch of those, but I love that idea. Sure. You can, you can do that. Um, you know, if you make a commitment and say for every morning, you'll do 45 minutes of videos and just do, I get this week was my birthday and I had people that actually took the time out and did a video text via messenger. As opposed to just posting on somebody's Facebook page. We do post on people's Facebook page, but we make a graphic for it. But I'm going to commit to doing the videos to every single person in my Facebook Messenger, which is 5,000 people. Well, if they have Messenger, but there's 5,000 people. So I think that based on all of the intel uh, and research that I've done, that video is way better and the way the more you can personalize it because i know the time i know you're saying about time management but the more you can personalize it the more it's actually special because yeah. i think some i could tell you this the people that said hey maria happy birthday versus the corporate video i got of like people dancing heads with birthday hats on and stuff happy birthday happy birthday those were videos but they were they were generic so it's just like, oh, they're sending me a drone network, which is nice, but it's not as impactful as saying somebody's name. You know, one of the things I always get mad at my husband about is that he calls me, hey, hon, babe, babies, whatever. Okay. He calls me all these names. Nice name, but he does, he he doesn't say my name on. And I said to him, Chip, his name's Chip. I said, Chip, you need to say my name. Like, I forget what it is because you never say it. What is it? So then when he says it, I'm like, it's like, oh, wait. I'm like, wait, did you just say my name? It's such a weird thing. But, you know, look, this is all about humans and connecting with people. And let's start, really start to connect with people. That let's, is make, funny. let's make connections and relationships. And let's try to start, stop being salesy, so to speak, right? So like, that's why when Chantal, you went blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, I know she's mad. We <laughs> have a mindset that expires. We have to have the mindset. They're already going to be mad. They're going to be mad. Our job is to calm the situation, have try to make a connection with them, have the confidence that you are the expert in the marketplace. And by the way, if you're not, get to be the expert in the marketplace, right? 10,000 hours will get you there. Put the time in, put the energy in. Time's going to go by anyway, everybody. Listen, time's going by anyway. What are you going to do to make an impact? My commitment is to impact as many people as I can in my lifetime. And I'm doing that through our scholarship program here at Maria Quattrone and Associates, okay? And so what does that look like? And the impact daily I can make in my organization. So how can you impact other people? You know, joining a church group, joining some kind of, you know, dance class, joining a volunteer organization, you know, giving back in some way, giving away free information. Be a resource. Tell people about what's going on in your community. You know, is there a, a holiday, you know, is there a fair this weekend? Is there, you know, what's going on? Don't just always talk about real estate. See, what happens, and I talk about this this morning, my office meeting. I had it from 11 to 12. So I dropped up, jumped on a couple of minutes after that because I was wrapping up. Every Tuesday, 11 to 12, and then Thursday, 11 to 12. Okay. So today, I said, listen. The videos that I do and get sent out and the emails that get sent out, follow up boss, because that's our CRM, they are priming the database for you to call them. So when they call, they know who MQA is. They know who we are because they've already been spoken to. People will come to the office. I've never met them in my life, but they say, I saw your videos. I saw you on TV or I saw whatever. And they'll feel like they know me 100% because they learned my personality through my videos. Mm. So even if your video is just about, hey, 
I want to let you know what's going on in our community this weekend. It's 4th of July. We have this celebration or that thing. Or it doesn't, you know, start to think of it more like, how long do you intend to be in this industry? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, longer. Start to think of your real estate career like that. What impact till death to us part? Okay, Joel. <laughs> hey, Joel. That's awesome. Um, so, what, how long are you going to be in the business? Start treating people like that. And guess what? If you win, you lose. Meaning if you win and somebody else doesn't win, you lose. Mm. I had a lot of hard lessons. A lot of lessons. That's good. Well, we are way past time. I didn't even realize how we went past time because I enjoyed my time with you so much, Maria. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents. And tune in next week for another power-packed episode. This is the Millionaire Real Estate Podcast.